And right now, joining us, Texas Rangers Hall of Famer, Ian Kinsler. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. People are stoked for you already. Oh. Now, we've we've been asking they can hear player. Yeah, yeah we, we can gotta hear like, you. you got to, like, eat this microphone. <laughs> yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> I can see we're going to have to mentor this you like great. we did, this Derek. we got some work to do. Now, we've been asking people who've Mike been Adams involved in the, in the game all day long. Oh, Mike Adams. What does opening buddy. day mean to you, and what does it mean to the organization? Uh, it means you're in first place, you know. and <laughs> That's true. If you win, then you're still undefeated. So let's, it, it, there's a lot of excitement in opening day. I think you spend the whole offseason preparing yourself, uh, the whole spring training preparing yourself, getting together as a team, trying to figure out what your identity is. And it, and it all seems to start today. We, you know, at the end of the day, when you're done with the game, you, you get home and you're like, okay, it was one game out of 162. Um, whether you win or lose, it's not going to make or break the season. But there's something special about opening day where – you, you kind of do feel like it, there's a correlation there between opening day and how the season's going to go. Statistically, probably not, but the feel of it is, is always grand. How much of a, an adjustment did you have to make going from being a player to now, you know, you retired and then you went to coaching and then now you're working in the front office kind of thing? So how long did it take you to make that adjustment? from after the game, after retiring? Uh, it takes a while, you know. It's a, I think everybody's, uh, everybody's different, but um, you're, so used to, you're so used to having your schedule given to you on a daily basis. You know exactly what you're so regimented. You know exactly what you're supposed to be doing at what time of the day, you know, where you're supposed to be, whether you're doing off-season workouts, you have your lunches scheduled, your breakfast scheduled. You know, you have everything scheduled. And then when you stop playing, it's just like, I, don't, I guess I'll go play golf. I don't know. So... <laughs> You try to figure that out, but... Uh, or like karate with Michael Young. Yeah, you go get your black belt, you know? <laughs> do, do weird things, but... Um, yeah, it's, it takes... It, I think everybody's different, but, you know, it, it takes a little time to, to feel comfortable with, with uh, not competing at a high level like that. Ian Kinsler joining us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. Now, I don't know if what we saw is true, but my father-in-law and I were watching a game, and you were playing against the Angels, and you travel to go get a, a pop fly in foul territory. You catch the ball, and you look down, and there's like three Angels fans sitting there, and they hold their hands out like, I want the ball. And you just kind of turned around and ran off. And I was like, he's so competitive. <laughs> he won't even give him a foul ball. I love this guy. Is that like, do you happen to remember this? Or yeah, were you like that. that? Yeah, I remember that. Did you see that smile on his <laughs> yeah, face? He remembers. Awesome. He's like, those kids weren't getting that ball. <laughs> no, I mean, in today's day and age with social media, I probably got smashed, but. Um, you know, it was it was more of a joking kind of. You're wearing angel stuff. You're not getting this. You I know? like that. I'll, I'll go find the kid with the Rangers hat on and 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 uh, make his day. What's your thoughts on the uh, the pitch clock and the bigger bases? Do you think that plays an advantage as a guy that could have stolen a lot of bases? The guy, <laughs> you're pretty quick in the box. You'd have to with. play on the infield again as a second baseman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. When I first heard about all these rules, it seemed a little gimmicky to me was my first initial reaction, but I always seem to react that way when it's, you know, replay with the umpires. My first reaction was like, man, this is, this is gimmicky. This isn't the NFL, stuff like that. Those are where my thoughts go right away. Um, but after time, after you see it for a little while, I think, I think that this is really going to improve the game this year. I think the pitch clock's going to improve the game. Uh, I don't get the whole big base thing. Uh, they're saying injury prone and all, or injuries Just that are happening. Just a great safety, yeah. I don't remember that many injuries happening at first base. Maybe a couple of years. You, they don't you make them like they about, used to. I guess. I don't know. Um, what about pickoffs, But too? as far as pickoffs and stealing bases, I think it's going to bring the stolen base, base back into the game. And I think the games are going to be faster paced. I think there's going to be more offense. And I think it's going to be a better product, really. You are a very aggressive base runner. If a guy had picked, let's just say it's a long at bat, 3-2 count, he's already picked twice, would you ever try to deke a steal as the pitcher's coming set just to see if you could get a pick? Because if you got back to first, it was automatic to second. So I'm wondering how you might, be an aggressive base runner, want to play with the pitcher to try to get those first two picks early in a count? Yeah, absolutely. I think you, as a base runner now, you've got to constantly be de deking a stolen base. So they don't know if you're going or if you're just deking. So if you're constantly playing with their head, trying to see where they're at, they don't know if you're just standing there or if you're stealing or what's going on, but I think I'd also trip over my feet with excitement. Like, I, I don't know, did you, see, did you see Ronald Acuna the other day? He got two picks, 
and he was safe on both of them, so he knew the guy wasn't going to pick off as a lefty. The guy picked up his foot, and he took off and fell on his feet. <laughs> he, he was so excited, he just, like, wiped out. Um, you know, it just, it just opens up the game, it seems like. And, it, you know, first and second, let's say a guy gets picked off at second base, the pitcher now only has two more opportunities to get you at first. So that open, you know, it's just there's so many different rules that I think it's going to be a little uh, – I think there's going to be some rough patches to start the season that they're going to have to get through. But um, overall, I think it's going to be good. What's your anticipation of – what's a realistic an anticipation for this team? Because we've bounced back between, hey, let's shoot for 500. Hey, that's kind of Vegas is thinking 84 wins. But then we get a lot of fans that are like, if you don't make the playoffs, this season's a failure. 162 and 0. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, right. like Ian you. said, right. if you don't win today, you can't do that. <laughs> what do you think are realistic expectations for where this team can finish? Well, my feelings are coming out of spring training, you always felt like if you didn't make the playoffs, it was a failure. Regardless okay. of what the experts on the outside were saying or Vegas or whatever, you, you felt like the guys that you had in that clubhouse were capable of, of winning and going to the playoffs. Um, that's always the feeling. But – with this club, I think the offense gets overlooked a little bit because of the you know the acquisitions they made on the mound. The pitching staff obviously has potential to be dominant if they can stay healthy, but um, the offense gets a little overlooked. With and Garcia and Lowe, I feel like they do not get the respect they deserve. Yeah, I, I really I really feel like they're going to be able to create a lot of runs. I think they were fifth in the league in runs last year, you know. So that, and and I didn't feel like Seager or Simeon really got going until the All Star break. And you get a normal season from these two guys. A productive, you know, well-rounded season from those two guys. And then um, Josh Young has really, really impressed me with his bat. Uh, defensively, he's really improved. I just think that, um, you know, the, the offense is getting overlooked a little bit. Whatever you say improved, because we've heard that from Chris Young as well. Can you give us a breakdown of, like, what you see that lets you know, hey, that looks better? I mean, his feet are just moving a lot better. He's he's positioning himself in, in, better, in better places when the ball's coming to him, whether – that he's making a throw to first or turning a double play, his positioning's just better. I think it's just it's come with experience and comfort. Um, the more repetition you get, the more the more that you work with the coaches, the more you dedicate yourself to to that, the better you get. I mean, that's the idea. Yeah. Not every, not everybody's that way, but that's the idea, and he he's definitely improved. Well, you got to do, uh, which a lot of people don't know maybe, is you got to participate, obviously, in WBC, and then also you got to coach with Team Israel. Have you ever thought about coaching now that you're, you know, I know you're working with the Rangers, but to help out the young guys going forward, giving them more tips to help them to get to this level? Yeah, I think that's, that'll be part of what I'm doing and being double A a little bit and helping those guys and uh, whether it's defensively or base running, whatever I see is try, trying, to, trying to help the organization as a whole. So that could be, you know, A ball, double A, triple A, um, and, and these guys in the big leagues. I think the big leagues is a little bit different because they have so many coaches here and they're, they're constantly being – being evaluated and trying to figure out a way to get better uh, day in and day out. So, you know, as my position, it's not going to be probably as relevant here, but helping CY with, you know, roster construction or trades or, I mean, even amateur draft, whatever, you know, I, I'm, I'm really game for anything. I know this is a question for both of you guys, Ian and Derek. Give me kind of your best memory of each other. You guys got to play a lot of baseball together. We're on two World Series teams. And your Does a Derek Holland memory come up or an Ian Kensler memory come up for you as you guys played so many games? If you guys want to share I your have... worst memory of each other, too. <laughs> I was gonna say, well, I, I've, it's more, for me, it was like getting to face him for the first time after obviously playing with him. I remember the first time I got up there, I kind of like lost it a little bit. I lost my composure because it's, you know, I play with him. He's somebody I've looked up to. He's helped me out a lot. And it's like, oh, crap, I got to face him. And then all I kept thinking is, just throw it inside because he's going to pull it so far foul. <laughs> and sure enough, I left a grapefruit for him, and he got a home run. But I did get the punch his first ticket. First at bat? His first at bat in San Diego. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got him back, though. He got me back. But he, he's got he's to strike me out three more times to really even the scales, and I'm not playing anymore. So <laughs> We'll test him up. You're only as good as your last one. Um, stuff. <laughs> no, for me, for me, honestly, there's a lot of memories that I have playing with Derek. Um, but the one that stands out the most for me is that World Series start that he had at the Bold Ballpark. It was just – that was the pinnacle of Derek Holland. Like, he, he was on point that game from the first pitch to the time that Wash came out and got him. Uh, he dominated the game. And it was just so cool to see him come from a young age, come through the organization, come up, and then get to that point where we're all in a World Series game together. 
and then ha- and then watch him, you know, from second base just dominate the game. That was for me probably the, the highlight of, of his career really, and for me like I'll I'll remember that forever. This is a a, a two parter, but on the field, turning a double play, and I don't know how much you've like thought about the how that feeling of turning a perfect double play. Did you like being the guy that flipped, or did you like being the guy that was turning and throwing? Well, at second base, you're involved in pretty much, you know, 80% of double plays, yeah. all double plays. So I, I just love them. I mean, there's something about getting two that just brings excitement. It, it relaxes your pitcher. There's just so many things that it does. It, it, fr- it infuriates the other team. Yeah. You know, they're pissed. You're happy. And it's kind of a – it's definitely a swing in the game. Um, so I love turning double plays, whether it was – was was me starting it or finishing it um and anytime there was a spectacular play on the front end i mean those are the sweetest man we love that you came on with us appreciate really it appreciate we're it. all pumped for opening day i can already already tell derek wants to continue this conversation <laughs> off air which is always <laughs> a good sign <laughs>